we thank God I found out a long time that I can't upset God and I can get mad all I want about what he's doing in my life but I won't upset him and the good thing about the patience of God he'll wait till I come down and continue on amen that's the love of God let you get all mad, spoiled, turned around in the middle of the floor. And once you get finished, he said, well, then let's continue on. Because you don't move me, I move you. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord this morning for what he is doing in our lives. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, blessed Savior. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender. Oh, I surrender all. Tell it for yourself. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender Ecclesiastes chapter 3, as we continue on in our series entitled How to Deal With It. Started off realizing and acknowledging that God sets the time. And from there we move with a title, It's About Time. I'm living to live again. And from there we found out it's all in the seed. And then last week, we discussed the unexpected seasons, the inescapable realities that we face, yet God is in control of it all. And so as we move into part five, we're going to be here for a while. Part five of this series in Ecclesiastes, looking at verse one, and then we'll just work with it. If you allow me, I'll just work with verse 3b. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Verse 3b. A time to break down and a time to build up. This morning, I want to speak on the subject, the drama of brokenness. The drama of brokenness. Look at somebody and tell them it's the downside, which makes up the upside. It's the downside, which makes up the upside. The drama of brokenness, a time to break down, and then a time to build let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for all that you have done, your grace and your mercy. Thank you again for touching our praise, finding out early that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Somehow, in your presence, it makes us forget about all that we had to go through. Something about your joy. A joy that's unspeakable. A joy that makes us dance when we want to sit down. Is that joy. A joy that calls our hands to raise when we want to fold them together. That type of joy. That causes us to shout hallelujah when we want to keep it silent. 
Thank you for the unspeakable joy. Words cannot explain or describe just how I really feel about you. And so we thank you for finding our fellowship worthy and honorable to you. Have your way in this place, Spirit of the living God. Speak to us through the volume of the book. It's the only way we can hear direction and instructions. So you have your way, O oh God. We surrender all. And Lord, when you're finished, I'm finished. When you say it's over, then it's over. We want to leave here hearts burning because of the word. Now, Lord, only you can make us different in the way we came in. We look forward to that. The changes that you're going to make in our lives. We look forward to our, home, our homes being different than the way we left them. Our jobs being different than the way we left them. Our friends different than the way we left them. Most of all, our lives different than the way we came in. We ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. drama of brokenness. What makes life much easier to deal with is what we've been finding out and learning is having the the full and true understanding of God's purpose. And I don't know about you if, you, if you're like me is when you find something grand or great or awesome about God, immediately you say, I wish I'd known that back then. It's, it's something about the Lord opening the door or revealing something that causes you to think back <coughs> of all the times that uh, to us we wasted because of doing things and wanted to do it our way. If you cannot look back at your life and outside of the will of God and realize and declare that it's been wasted, then you are looking wrong. Because I've wasted a lot of time running from him and ran back into him. One, one master lesson that Jesus revealed one lesson that he revealed and taught was how heart matters one thing that he stayed on was where heart needs to be y'all stay with me I mean you should know me by now we're, we're not just meeting each other I'm normally going to dance I'm going to tell you ahead of time I'm going to preach my heart out I'm going to dance my heart out, and then I'll let you go. So now that we are familiar with each other, I can move on. One of the things that God taught was how heart matters. Yet it was the constant approaching of the religious leaders towards him that exposed how the external or exterior life can be deceptive. He spoke of the heart, and while speaking of the heart, the religious leaders will come by and show the exterior, while the interior was deceptive. It's in Mark chapter 23, in verse 1, when he says, he begins to tell the multitude and his disciples in verse 1. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, he says. Therefore, whatever they bid you, observe and do, but do not according to their works. He says what they are preaching 
or what they're teaching, bid them and do. But don't do according to their works. Hmm. He says, for they say and do not. Okay, he's talking about the religious leaders, so let me put myself there. There's many that will preach the truth, but not living what they're preaching. And so he says is the, the exterior of the, those religious leaders that are, that becomes deceptive. And Jesus said that they, they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, lay them on people's shoulders and will not lift a finger to move them. He said they're going to bid you things you do, the things of God but not according to the way they're doing it. Then in verse 12 of, of Matthew chapter 23, he said, whoever exalts himself shall be humble. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It's amazing how Jesus can pick up the internal when all man can see is the external. It's amazing how his main lesson here was the heart. So it is the heart now and the character that needed to be touched and which only he can do. He spoke of the heart around those who were deceiving many, but showing them that the character of a man and the heart of man needs to be touched. If not, we will clean up the exterior Come on. and continue to fool many. What he was showing them, Minister Scriber, is this. Just doing the right things were not enough. Ah. It was doing the right things for the right reasons yeah. that he taught. Just doing them for the sake of doing them because it's right doesn't mean anything in the eyes of God. I'm doing them because for the right reasons. It's amazing because the point can be altogether missed if the heart isn't in it. And if the heart isn't in it, immediately you find or seek ways around the way that will get you there. If the heart's not in it, I'll try to create my own path to the place he said I'll be, but I'll try to do it my, my way. And so he speaks of those who exalt themselves. For the time will come where they will be humble. And then he speaks of a time or season when those who are humble shall be exalted. Oh, I'm going to have a good time with this. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Keep in mind that what helps a child of God make sense of his situation or his season is when one is taught and instruct about the community living in Christ Jesus. When one is instructed and taught about living in the community of Christ, we are all involved in the community of Christ Jesus. And when we're taught and instructed in that, it helps us make sense of the seasons and the situations we find ourselves in, which can be called or seen as a narrative. Stay with me now. We're all in the community because our lives are now in Christ Jesus. We're no longer in the streets. And so now that we are involved in the community, we can call this the narrative because narrative becomes a way of naming the principal key story about life. 
this is my narrative, okay. which helps me make sense of my purpose. <laughs> I, I am in the community, and my life is not just a life. It's a narrative. So the narrative of my life or the storyline or the chronicle of my life is what shapes or forms the character. <laughs> because you'll know what community one is involved in by the character they display. Right. Okay, because, because my life is a storyline read by many. Uh -huh, people reading you right now. Did it? Uh huh. Uh, my life is a chronicle. It's, it's a narrative. And my life is shaped by my storyline, which is uh, the chronicle of my community. This is why we seek to know and understand the plan of God from the beginning to the end, because my storyline is part of what I know about him. <laughs> Whew. Uh, it's a narrative. I'm, 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 living, I'm, I'm living out a storyline. That's why you can't turn my page too fast. That's why you can't read my next chapter until I get there. That's why you can't tell me the end of my story because you ain't part of my story. <laughs> my life is it's the chronicle of my life. The storyline because of is forming me by what I know about God. And the reason why I need to know his beginning and the end, because it becomes my story. And when I know the story, I begin to see how in the hand of God, listen, brokenness becomes a virtue. <laughs> now, when I think about my life as a story, I begin to look at everything in my storyline. And I begin to see how in my story, brokenness becomes a virtue in God's hand. So it's not an end in itself, but it shows that the crushing bursts greater communion. Well, see, you got to know the story. Because if you don't know the story, what happens is you'll get angry at the crushing. <laughs> but when you know the story, you know that the crushing births communion. Uh -huh. I, 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 I never prayed like I pray now until I begin to get crushed. I don't know the story. Because if you don't know the story, then... Uh, you won't see that brokenness from the hand of God is a virtue. <laughs> he must love me because he wants to break me. <laughs> oh, y'all got to see this now because, you know, he could have let you run and do whatever you wanted to do. But, but, but what we don't see is the full story. And if you don't understand the full story, uh, you won't recognize that brokenness in the community of God is a virtue. <laughs> okay, okay. It's E.W., uh, his name is E.W. Hengsenberg. He was a German Protestant theologian and exegete. Uh, born around the 1800s. This is what he said. He said, hints in the kingdom of God. It is possible to be joyous and contented even when for the moment the season of pulling down or breaking down is present. If then the beginning is good and the end is good, we may reasonably bless, be less anxious and careful about that which meanwhile befalls us. And look with a calm and cheerful mindset on the changes now taking place around us. <laughs> uh, uh, now that I see that it's uh, the hand of God breaking me, I'm calm. <laughs> now, 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 it's different when you try to break me. Because <laughs> if you try to break me, I'm going to try to break you back. <laughs> but when God breaks me, <laughs> it humbles me because now I know who's doing the breaking. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, now, now. It's, it's, a joyous, it's joyous to be contented uh, even when there's the pulling down or the breaking down of my life. Huh. Uh, because it's good, it ends good, it, it, it begins good, because it's coming out of good hands. <laughs> uh, so I can't have a bad ending because uh, the God that I'm serving. <laughs> so now he, uh, while it befalls on us, Hesenberg said, <laughs> why it, while it falls on us, <laughs> I'm, I'm calm and I'm cheerful. <laughs> uh, I have a cheerful spirit and mindset. <laughs> on the changes taking place around me. <laughs> because he's breaking me, I get excited. <laughs> now, now, for the next 10, 20 minutes, I'm going to talk that's going to mess your head up. <laughs> because when he breaks me, I get excited. <laughs> I didn't realize how much he loved me until I saw how much he was trying to break me. <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> I get ex ex excited. I get anxious because <laughs> in the brokenness, there's drama. <laughs> There's drama and brokenness. I, I, I realize there's so much drama and brokenness in my storyline. You got to know my storyline. It's so much drama and brokenness that I'm learning now uh, to be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplications. Uh, I make my request known unto God. I'm realizing now it's not just the blessings. It's not just the blessings only. Uh, because I've categorized my blessings. <laughs> when it's something given to me <laughs> that I wanted or needed, it's a blessing. <laughs> but when something is given to me that I didn't think I need or wanted, <laughs> I look at it as a curse. <laughs> but when I begin to see the beginning and end of God, <laughs> I begin to see the beginning and end of my storyline. <laughs> That even though it doesn't seem like a blessing to me, it's blessed to be broken. Okay, stay with me now. It's a blessing to be broken because it's the virtue of it. Uh, he found me enough to want to break me. Uh, okay, now, if the development isn't uh, arrested, if I don't arrest the development, if I don't arrest it correctly, the flesh will introduce this door that opens ideology scarcity. Uh, if I don't arrest this development, then this, this, this thought of ideology scarcity or this ideology of lack, I begin to now come across my mind. If I don't embrace uh, the development, if I don't arrest it the way it's supposed to be arrested, then now I begin to look at things being scarce. I begin to say, what will be left if you do that? Uh, where there be enough for me to go on? Uh, how does this look to others? That's when now, uh, when I don't arrest my development the right way, it breaks away from me and causes me now to be aggressive towards the molding of my life. When I don't arrest my development the way it's supposed to do, then it'll slip away out of my handcuffs and cause me to be aggressive to the molding he's doing in my life. Then I begin to ask questions about what he's doing. How long is this going to take? How much are you going to pull from me? How long do I have to stay here if I don't arrest the development the right way? Then my flesh gets involved and it introduces this ideology of scarcity. The Lord, if you take that, I ain't going to have nothing left. If you take tonight's sleep, I'm going to make it tomorrow. If you pull my all my tithe and offering, how am I going to eat the next day? If I don't arrest this correctly, then this ideology of scarcity or lack begins to come. And now he, I become aggressive uh, towards the molding of my life. I become competitive uh, that what the God can do for me, uh, what the Holy Spirit is trying to do for me, uh, I think I could do it better. Uh, and if I can hold to the rational or enough reasoning, uh, then brokenness will be avoided. Uh, Y'all got to stay with me now. Uh, I just want to work for 3B. Uh, 
uh, if I allow this ideology uh, that when he takes from me, uh, he's taking everything I need. When he pulls away from me, when he touches my mind and my heart, when he shifts my seasons, I think he's pulling everything. You taking everything from me. Have you ever took some from a child and they asked him for some chips or something, and all you did was got a handful, and they'll sit and cry for 15, 20 minutes as if you took the whole bag. But you realize they didn't have enough, so you didn't take everything they had. But if you have no understanding or insight, all you have to do is look back in the back. I only took two chips. Whoever said that? I only took two chips. You getting all bunched up, balled up, crying for 15, 20 minutes, and I didn't take what I should have taken. I bought the bag. You gonna get mad at me? I can take the bag from you. I just want to see if you want to share the molding I'm doing in your life. So now we get this ideology, Reverend Alice, of scarcity. That when God pulls from me, it's like you, like you ain't going to have no other boo. Oh, there's plenty of booze out there. Just because he touched that boo doesn't mean that's all the booze of the boo world. So here now, it seems as if I'm lacking. I'm lacking now because you want this from me. I become now competitive. I begin to fight my molding. I begin to go against the shaping. I begin to see now if I can reason myself or get enough rational thinking, then I can avoid brokenness all together. It's funny now. We move through the life trying to avoid the brokenness because don't we don't know the true storyline of our life. I got to break you because if I don't break you then you will try to tell me how to mold you I have to put you there because you'll try to shift your way there I got to prepare you for the season I'm getting ready to take you to but if you try to mold yourself you've been doing it for 30 years and all I found was another lump of clay when I found you I didn't find you made up I didn't find you on a shelf I didn't find you a vessel of honor when I found you you was a lump of clay are you tired of molding yourself and being competitive to the molding I want to do and so now uh, we start to get aggressive. Uh, Deacon Watkins, we get aggressive now uh, because we got a timeline on what God needs to do for us. Uh, did I give a point yet? Uh, we got a timeline uh, of what God is trying to do for us. Uh, and so now the rational thinking comes uh, because like me, we know it all. Uh, I know what I need. Uh, I know what part of breaking I need. Uh, well, the problem is uh, I broke it and I'm still having the same issue. You. Then that means I don't know what to break. Only God knows what to break in me. Uh, we get competitive. So now we're trying to tell the spirit of the living God how to shape and move us. Put me there. Because I can do better there. He said, no. I'm putting you here. Because you think you can do better than me. But I saw you next week. You'll be so far from me. That's why I put you here. So you can stay close to me. So now we, we rationalize and become competitive towards what the spirit of God is trying to do. So when now the brokenness intrudes, when denial is present, it becomes a failure. When he comes to break you and denial is there, the broken falls. Y'all got to stay with me now. When you have built up a defense against brokenness, when brokenness comes and is denied, it falls because the brokenness is seen as intrusion. Uh, who said I need to work on my attitude? Uh, who said I was nasty? Uh, when it comes in your life, uh, it intrudes. Uh, it intrudes when denial is present. Uh, he's been knocking on your door saying, you know, we got to get broken. Uh, if you want what you ask me for, uh, I got 
to break you. But if I'm not in a position for God to break me, it feel like he is intruding on my life. Who said I have joy? Ha <laughs> ha, I'm laughing right now. Oh no, that ain't real joy. But when it comes and denial is present, I know I'm preaching to myself. It feels like it's intruding. It seems as if out of all the breaking here, you got to pick my house. Out of all the brokenness, you got to come to me. It seems like I get broke on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday and I can look around and it doesn't seem like there's anybody else being broken so the next time I'm going to put up my defense when God tries to break me I'm going to fight the one who's trying to mow my life oh good God almighty it's the drama of brokenness so now it seems as if it's intruding when he's trying to break me and when it seems as if he's intruding it becomes a failure some things God's been trying to break from you for 20 something years uh-huh uh, two years you don't want to admit it but it's, I always say two years you put the zero on when you get in the car some things he's been trying to break for a long time but I've been holding on to it because to me, I don't need that broken. If you want to break somebody, break them. But don't break me. Oh, it seems as if he is bombarding my life. And there's always some issue after another. Oh, but it's a time. It's a time to be broken down. And so now he is not until Israel was in exile. It was not until Israel was in exile and began to face and experience devastating adjustments that the characteristics and the inventions and the intentions of God, which was to work a radical newness, it was made known. So it was not until they start to go through the devastating walks of life in the wilderness, they begin to see the character of God and begin to see God's intentions that God is trying to make a radical newness because who will walk with me and hear me complain every day about not me about him who will want to feed me when I said I was better off in Egypt and dislodge what I am saying and have a thought for me beyond the thoughts I have for him who would save my sandals while I complain in the wilderness that he ain't got no plan for me at all and listen to me all through my life and never curse me but tell me I got good thoughts good God almighty I got good thoughts about you what kind of God is that to listen to the thoughts I had about him and respond I got good thoughts about you oh we don't understand this now so now it seems as if uh, with Israel uh, that as long as they were going through uh, uh, the devastating adjustments uh, they begin to see more of the character and intentions of God uh, because he didn't his intentions was not to kill me uh, uh, I begin to see it more uh, uh, because I tried him uh, I don't know about you but I, have you tried God's hand uh, have you tried it uh, I remember when things years ago uh, uh, things wasn't going my way uh, I would toss my body on my bed and say I ain't messing with you no more and in the midst of me talking he said I'm gonna still mess with you oh it's something about God that he don't really hear what I you know it's something about him that overrides my talk about him is his talk about me something about God that his love looked past my faults and saw my need saw that I'm only throwing my Bible because I don't understand I'm only stopping because I get confused every now and then I only get upset because it seems like everybody around me getting blessed but me but I'm so glad that you don't 
judge me by my exterior. But you see that these tears are not tears of anger, but tears of concern. And I will not let my denial cause your brokenness to be abandoned. Oh, good God Almighty. I, I, know, I know I'm preaching to myself. And so now he, what Israel found out, I got 10 more minutes. What Israel finds out, that he doesn't settle for chaos. He hangs around until the smoke clears. And then he declares his blessings. He orders the well-being of their lives and our lives. It's amazing how. God hangs around and let all the dust I kicked up fall down. And when it falls down, I see the blessing of the Lord. It's amazing how he hangs around. Uh, even right now, your mind ain't really on him, some of y'all. He's still hanging around. Just hoping you will think about what I brought you out of yesterday. And that you'll look past what I did last week. And if nothing else, give me some prayer. You ain't got to raise your hand. You ain't got to dance like the deacons. But you at least should give me some type of acknowledgement that you understand the brokenness in your life. And so now he, he waits for the dust to settle because he will not do in anything in chaos. Uh, he waits for you to decide in your mind that only good things come from above. Uh, he waits for the dust to settle uh, that you don't deny what he's trying to do. Uh, and once the dust settles uh, and once the smoke clears, uh, he decrees the blessing he decreed before you start kicking up the dirt. Uh, notice it's the same thing. Uh, have you ever kicked your legs, stumped your feet uh, and said, bless the Lord at all times? Uh, got mad. Uh, went right back the same scripture and it said bless the Lord at all he's talking right now uh, he's going to tell you the same thing he told you before you went in uh, because God is not man that he shall lie numbers 23 19 uh, he's not going to lie to you uh, but you got to deal with the seasons that come your way uh, and so now he uh, he hangs around with the decree and the blessings uh, the order and the well being uh, and we know that the building up is prior to the breaking down uh, okay now let's dive in uh, because now we know uh, that the building up is prior to the breaking down uh, the building up is prior to the breaking down uh, yet breaking is arranged first in Solomon's passage uh, so the expression of breakdown uh, uh, implies that there is a building that needs to be overthrown. <laughs> oh, good God. Y'all ain't see this. <laughs> it's a time to break down. <laughs> then it's a time to build up. <laughs> Wait a minute, because I got stuck there. <laughs> I said, shouldn't you want to build up first? <laughs> and if you don't like it, break down. <laughs> no, Solomon says, <laughs> there's a time to break down. <laughs> and then it's a time to build up, <laughs> which implies <laughs> that there's a building that got to be overthrown. <laughs> because I'm not just going to build on top of that. <laughs> I'm going to bring that down, <laughs> and then I'll build that up. <laughs> oh, it's amazing <laughs> that he didn't say build up, break down. He said break down. Because when God found me, he had to break it down before he can build. Good God Almighty. Before he can build me up. Look at somebody say he had to break down first. If you want to know what's all that noise and construction, all that smoke and, and dust, he had to break me down first. He ain't going to build over top of my mess. He ain't going to do no new construction with the old mindset. God God will break down a time for that and don't get mad when God is working on it's a time for this when God has to break down before he builds up a time to break down means there's a building that has to be overthrown How do you know that? Because uh, uh, Nimrod built up. God tore down and allowed David to build up. <laughs> because when I build up, I'm building up with the wrong reason. Okay, okay, now. And so now here, Solomon Kohila says, 
uh, I recognize there's a time where the building has to be overthrown. Huh. Uh, and then he can build up. Huh. And so oftentimes, huh, in the process of destruction huh, and construction, huh, the old must be broken and removed before the new and better can take its place. Uh, anytime there's a new idea, when there's a new construction, you got to take down the old construction. And so now here, there's destruction and construction in the will of God. He's got to tear down, but he's got to build up. Because he won't tear down and leave it. He can just leave it. Y'all ain't getting that. Why tear down and not put nothing in its place? I can just leave it. But if in my mind I knew I had to tear down, then in my mind I know what I want to put there. Y'all ain't getting that. So it's also destruction and construction construction with God that something new is going to take its place but I have to overthrow this building first before I can add the new thing in its place and if the integrity of the structure isn't known the results can cause one to continue building if you don't understand the integrity of the structure you begin to be that's why you ain't just been nasty you've been nasty for a long time. You haven't just been evil. You've been evil for a long time. Ask your friends. You ain't got to ask your pastor. Ask your friends. So because if I don't understand the integrity of the structure, I begin to now continue building. I continue to build up something that I should have brought down. I continue to work on it when it should have been brought down. I continue now to build up those things that should have come down and then what happens is uh, it should have come down by my own doing or it should have fall down because it's beyond it's stress uh, when something falls down it's beyond it's stress limits or something should come down because you know it should come down but if you don't know the integrity of the building uh, that's why pastors preachers Angelus, whoever and whatever you want to call yourself. Bishops, presiding bishops, elect bishops, apostles, prophetess, teachers, whatever you call yourself. Start preaching the structure to the people so they'll stop trying to build on a sinful life. Because if you don't understand the sinful life that you're living, you'll continue to build and thinking you're building something. If you don't preach the word, and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will have people building on a building that should have come down a long time ago. And then when you try to preach the gospel, they denied the breaking of Jesus because they already been building all up to this point. Okay, now. Now, now. Now, now. now what happens is, what happens is, what happens is, when you don't build, when you build, I'm sorry, when you build and don't understand the integrity of the structure, what happens is you build beyond its stress level. This is why people lose their mind. Uh, because they build beyond the stress level uh, because they don't understand the integrity of the building uh, you can't handle that uh, but the spirit of God in you uh, will help you to persevere uh, and give you long suffering uh, and self control uh, but if you don't understand the integrity of the building uh, you'll build beyond its stress level uh, and now here uh, it causes deformity of the fractures and the structure uh, and now now, now you're building on a crack window and then you're trying to put a picture there uh, you can't explain your craziness that's because you don't understand the integrity of the building you got to first let him break down before he can build up okay let me give you a point uh, because uh, this father day is over with and I know I only get a father's day pass every now and then and so now uh, 
If I don't understand the integrity of the building, I continue to be. Have you ever said, or have you ever been around some friends? And they say, they said I'm jealous. Am I jealous? And all your friends keep quiet. You've been building too long and don't know the integrity of the structure. Have you ever asked your friends, am I nasty? Am I nasty? And no one wants to say as soon as you leave, they say, oh yes, he, she's nasty. You've been building on a structure and it's going beyond its stress level. And you want to know why. You want to commit suicide. And why you want to give up on life. Because you're building beyond its stress level. You wonder why you're snapping back. And you want to go back at people you think coming at you. You wake up on the defense. You go to bed on the defense. You're plotting to get back at people. Why you're sleeping. Can't even sleep all the way. Because you're trying to figure out how to get over on somebody. That's because you're building beyond your stress. I know I'm preaching. You're building beyond your stress level. You think everybody's out to get you. Nobody's for you. You build beyond your stress level. And now it's fractured. And the deformity. So anything will break you. Anything will set you off. Who made the coffee without any sugar? Anything will mess you up. They just mess me off. Uh, who were they talking about? Uh, they were just talking about the job. Uh, anything will take you uh, beyond your stress. Point one. We got to get delivered up in here. I can't go around the same place the same time again. I need God to break me because brokenness is a virtue. Point one. Point one. Are you ready? God is in breaking to shatter, but breaking to make whole. You got to see this. God is in breaking you to shatter you, but breaking you to make you whole. God is in breaking me to shatter me, but breaking me to make me whole. To everything, there's a season. And a time for every purpose under heaven. He says, Mr. Scriber, a time to break down, Hebrew word, parah. A time to break down, parah. Parah means to burst through or burst over or destructive activity. Parah means to stretch, to spread out. Not simply to punch a hole through, but to level. That's good. That's good. There is a time to get level. Because I can't build on something that's already been built. And I can't build on something that's half broken. There is an et, a time for para. Means to burst. Means destructive activity. Not to punch through a wall, but level the wall. Yes, yes, yes. He says, now there's a time to break down. We got to stay there. There's a time to parase. A time to stretch. A time to spread. You are in the wrong community if you don't want God to stretch you. Okay. All right. Now, did you write it down? God isn't breaking to shadow, but breaking to make whole. Yeah. Now, what you got to understand this. Let me help you out. There's a difference between a difference in being broken by his hands and broken in his arms. Because a child of God who is broken in his arms know there's revival at the end. I'm not broken by his hands like the wrath. I'm broken in his arms. That's why 
I can embrace the time of breaking down because I'm not being broken by his hand. He's not trying to shatter me. When you're broken in God's arms, he's trying to make you whole. God isn't breaking me to shatter me, but break me to make, you, make me whole. Listen, if I'm not broken by his hands, I'm broken in his arms. Now, which now as a child of God, I can look for revival at the ending. Because he didn't say a time to build up. Then I have to look for breaking down. My Lord. He said a time for breaking down and then a time for building up. Which now lets me know there's a revival at the end. Okay. Which is an opening to an ending. Oh, yeah. It's a reason to rejoice. The breaking down Thank you. lets you know there's an opening. Y'all ain't getting this. Because God doesn't break down without a door for you to go through. So when he's breaking me, it lets me know. There's an opening to the ending. So the breaking down, saints, is not evidence of his absence, but it's evidence of his presence. He's got to be near to me. How do you know? Because I'm being broken. He's right here. See, we have put the wrong understanding and definition of God's brokenness when now we are ashamed when God has to remove things in our life. And what we try to display is that God is always there. Well, uh, but I only see you when you're happy. So the breaking down is not evidence of his absence. To a child of God is evidence of his presence. That's why I don't care if you're around when he's breaking me down. All I want you to say, God must be right there with him because God will break down and watch what's coming down. Now, God, he'll break down a wall. This is what he does. Uh, Ms. Roosevelt, he'll break down a wall and then he'll build a bridge over. He'll dislodge the pride. He, he will cause the strong will to surrender. Whether it's a broken spirit, a broken heart, broken relationship, God will break down the wall and then build a bridge over it. Let me just let me just say this because let me just hear up get y'all this because I don't see nobody getting now. Now, Martin Luther said this, the theologian, uh, Mr. Scriber. Martin Luther said, God creates out of nothing. <laughs> Therefore, uh, until a man is nothing, God can make nothing out of it. <laughs> uh -huh, now. Uh, now you're wondering why he don't have his hand on you the way you want him. <laughs> That's because there's something there. <laughs> uh, when the something goes, you can see him molding your life. <laughs> But as long as it's something, you got to ask God in your prayer, Lord, is it something here? Because I don't feel the pressure of your hand in my life. Because if it's something there, he can't make something. If something's there, the something got to be nothing. And then God can create something out of nothing. Uh, that's why he breaks down. That's why when he comes in your life, he overthrow. Oh, we're getting ready to overthrow this. I don't need none of this. I don't need your good looks. I don't need your good clothes. I don't need your job. I don't need your money. I don't need your house. I don't need your car. I just need you. I don't need your bow tie. I don't need your hat. I don't need your dress. I don't need your products. I don't need your red bottom. I need you. If I got you, I can build back up. But I can't build if these things are in the way of you. Now, now, turn to Psalm 51. Turn to Psalm 51 verse 17. Can I get 10 more minutes? 
Psalm 51, verse 17. I don't have nothing else to do but preach. Where else can I go? Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh, God, thou will not despise. Psalm 34, verse 18. Psalm 34, verse 18. A broken and contrite spirit. Uh, when I'm broken and snarled into pieces, uh, you won't despise me. Uh, like others look at broken pieces as despising things. Uh, but I know you. Uh, you know how to work with junk. Uh, I've seen you work with junk before. Uh, uh, Psalm 34, 18. Uh, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Uh, he's close to them. Uh, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Uh, Psalm 50 one verse eight. Uh, he looks at the contrite spirit and the broken. Uh, not, not broken heart like your boo broken your heart. Because uh, he ain't no love because he wouldn't have broken your heart. Uh, we talking about the love of God. Uh, Psalms 51 verse 8. Uh, make me to hear joy and gladness uh, that the bones which thou hast broken uh, may rejoice. Uh, because when you break me, uh, I can still dance for some reason. Uh, have you ever danced while you was broken? Broken? Have you ever danced when you owe a bill? Have you ever danced and you didn't have a job? I can still dance. I may not be able to walk out of my life. I may not be able to walk out of God's life. But even with these broken bones, I learned how to rejoice with the broken bones of God. Because he knows which bones to break. He broke me enough that I won't leave him. But gave me enough breakage so I can still dance in his presence. Isaiah 66 verse 2 For all those who have my hand made and all those things have been said the Lord but to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and tremble point two Point two, don't lock me up with the Lord. This is what happens. Can I tell you something? My weekend with Jesus is probably any better weekend in the world. Point two, God can use those broken things. Write this down. God can use those broken things to become something breaking forth. God can use those broken things to become something breaking forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, God can use those broken things to become something breaking forth. Uh, because, listen, because we, we haven't gotten there yet, Deacon Nevels, but then he says there's a time to gather the stone. Uh huh. And it, I, I don't want to get there because I don't want to preach there because he hasn't talked to me yet, but he just gave me a little something right now. There's a time when you're going to gather the stones and say, You ain't think I was going to make it, did you? Okay. okay. Gather the stones that were thrown at you. They didn't think you was going to make it. They judged you when you were six years old. Say you was hard of hearing and you was going to go to jail and you was not going to make nothing of yourself. Well, you didn't think I was going to have my PhD, did you? You didn't think I was going to have my job, did you? The stones that were thrown, uh, throw them back. Uh, showing the blessings of God in my eyes. Right, let's, let's stay back in verse 3b. So now he, he uses those broken things uh, to become something breaking forth. Uh, he can mend unto you. Uh, he takes the things that broken up in your life uh, and he can't mend until uh, you give him all the pieces. Uh, uh, he can't put them together uh, the way they need to be together uh, until you give him all the pieces. Uh, stop trying to hide the pieces from God. Uh, he know you was messed up. Uh, he know you made some bad decisions. Uh, he know he shouldn't be in your life. Uh, he knew she shouldn't be in 
your life. Stop trying to hide the pieces to the one who's trying to mend the things back together. When you give him all the pieces, he'll put together and cause you to break forth, break through, break out, go up, rise up, uprise, build up before, and God will use it for your glory and your good in your life, and God will be glorified, and you will be edified in the process, but I can't ask God to mend the pieces in my life if I'm trying to hide the pieces from him. We use our own will against ourselves. Uh, don't get bored with me yet, please. Uh, don't get bored with me yet. <laughs> and so now what initiates the process of building uh, is insistent hope. Uh, what causes me uh, to now get excited about the process of building uh, because of my hope of the breaking down. Uh, the, the breaking down gave me hope. <laughs> Y'all ain't getting this. I got my hope not from the building up. I got my hope from the breaking down. Because it's going to be a time to break down. Oh, I'm excited. Because there's going to be a time for building up. So it's my process. And I got to initiate it by insisting hope. He completes work. And his completion is included. And devastation is part of it. And creation is part of it. Because your brokenness can be another's blessings. Uh, now, now what happens is uh, devastation and creation is part of it. Uh, because your brokenness helped this person. Uh, and your brokenness helped that person. Uh, that's why you share your testimony. Uh, uh, you, uh, listen, let me tell you something. Uh, look around. Uh, ain't nobody good in here. Uh, look around. Uh, when he found us, we was in dirt. Uh, some of you he found in the bar. Uh, some of you he found you house hopping. Uh, some of you he found with a joint in your hand he found some of you gossiping some of you lying some of you cheating he found some of us backbiting he found us all in a pool of blood looking for somebody to help us but I thank God that in God not only is his devastation but his creation because when God began to break my life it becomes another man's blessing because if you can see what it did to me then I know he can do it for you. Okay. We only on part five. He always pulled down. Listen, God always pulls down and destroys as a means and preparation. For building up. There's a time for parage. So when God starts to break down and destroy, it's a means and preparation for building up. Point three. If you're not growing here, it's because of your ground. Because I just grew another leaf while I was talking. Point three. Now, I know you ain't going to want to put this down, but you might as well put it down. God broke it because he bought it. You break it, you buy it. He already bought it, so he can break it. He broke it because he bought it. <laughs> A time to paras. And then he says, now, here's the, the revival. A time to barna. A time to paras and a time to barna. Now, barna, barna means to build up. It means to construct. It means to fashion. Uh, it calls a continuation. It, call, it can mean repair. Huh. Uh, so now he paras, but that time is over. Now he's barna. Huh. Uh, somebody could be in a paras season right now. Huh. Uh, but while one is in a paras season, another could be in a barna. Huh. But we don't get mad at each other. 
<laughs> because the season's going to change. <laughs> I, I can't get mad at you. <laughs> All I can say, bless the Lord. <laughs> uh, because there's a time for paras and a time for barna. <laughs> and once you recognize <laughs> the broke season, <laughs> you can now embrace the bill season. <laughs> recognize the broke season. Because <laughs> once you recognize the broke season, <laughs> you can embrace the building season. <laughs> okay, now, Jeremiah chapter 18. <laughs> uh, no, don't turn there. I, but, uh, I'm going to give you the scripture and you can look on your Jeremiah 18 verse 3 he says Jeremiah go down and hang at the powder's house I want you to go down and hang there and I want you to experience the hand of the potter and the brokenness I want you to see the whole thing the clay now Jeremiah saw that the clay is broken up from the rest of the ground the rest of the ground that was tread on what you got to understand is he don't just break you down that way he broke you away from the rest of the ground. Y'all ain't getting it. Out of all the people that could have been saved because they done less than me. He broke the ground. The ground when everybody tread on. And now he makes me a clay in his hand. What else did you see, Jeremiah? That the clay becomes the expression of the potter's mind. I saw that nobody knew what the potter was trying to do. But the potter knew what he had in mind for the clay. What else did you see? That the value was determined by the time spent on the clay. What raised the value is how much time that the potter spent on the clay. I'm glad that God works with me. Every hour of the day is sets of value on my life. What else did you see? I saw that the clay sat in the center of the wheel. It was in the center of the attention of the potter. And while the wind was spinning, the clay sat right there in the center. And when the spin the wheel was the clay set right there and he molded the clay from the bottom up to the top which gave it his flexibility and his strength because if he would have worked from the top to bottom I would have got big headed I would have thought I brought myself here but he cut me down put me the center of the wheel and then he worked me from the bottom up to the top so all I can tell you is God did it you want to know how I got here God did it you want to know how I got here God did it look at somebody say God did it now, now. we come to have church now Jeremiah, before we leave, Jeremiah, what else did you see, Jeremiah? I saw that the potter must, quote, unquote, master the clay. Okay. He mastered the clay. Listen, this is going to bless somebody. So the clay can be responsive to the touch. The reason why he mows and moves and press and pushes the clay. So the clay can get used to the touch of the <laughs> Okay. Okay, y'all not getting this. Now, it's, it's Robert Munger. Uh, Robert Munger said about 1955, he said this. He said the foreigner was traveling in Syria. And he became now acquainted with this shepherd. Uh, he, this, this foreigner now, he walking to and fro, back and forth. And he began to get acquainted with this, this shepherd. And every morning he noticed this shepherd, Deacon Thomas, would take food to a secluded place. He would take uh, food to this sheep uh, that had a broken leg. Uh, every day he saw this shepherd going to this place uh, taking food to the sheep with this broken leg. Uh, so he's looking at the, the animal uh, and he asked the shepherd, uh, uh, he said how did the sheep break his leg? Uh, did he have an accident? Did he fall? Uh, did some other animal do this? Uh, the shepherd says, no, I broke it. Uh, I broke the sheep's leg. Uh, I broke it myself. Self. Then the traveler looks at the shepherd. He's surprised. Why would you break your own sheep's leg? Uh, the shepherd said, you see, this is was a wayward sheep. And it would not stay within the flock. But it would lead other sheep 
astray and they would not let me come near it so I had to break the legs I broke the legs so he would allow me to feed him and then he would know me as his shepherd and his God so he don't run away from me God had to break us he specializes in bruised and broken in messed and marred uh, what he does is if I made it to the will there is an upside look at somebody say I made it to the will you can talk about me all you want I made it to the wheel and he broke my legs so I can't go nowhere I didn't want to come to church this morning but he broke my leg I didn't want to praise but he broke my leg so I know who's instructing me so I know who's guiding me so I know by his hands I am fed okay 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 all right I gotta let y'all go. I'm holding y'all too long. Yeah. I'm sure now. Uh, no, no, David, David, David. Uh, I'm gonna give you the throne, uh, but the way to the throne is through the cave of Adullam. Uh, I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna break you through the cave of Adullam, uh, and then I'll give you the throne. Uh, all right, all right, Joseph. Uh, I'm gonna give you the space of Pharaoh, uh, but we're gonna discuss it in the pits. Uh, oh, y'all ain't getting this. Uh, we're gonna discuss your future plans, uh, not on the plane. Uh, we're gonna discuss your future plans in the pits uh, to see if you're gonna still love me when I break your leg, uh, when I pull the pride down. When I pull the arrogance, the bitterness, the envy, the strife, the malice, would you still praise me? Because I didn't let you settle in the house. Then I didn't let you get the car that you want. Would you still praise me? Because you got to wear the same shoes this year. And you couldn't buy another set of dresses or clothes. Would you still praise me? Let's talk about the palace. But let's talk about it in the pit. Because if you can work the brokenness uh, and see it as a virtue uh, and you'll see how much I love you uh, if I didn't love you uh, I wouldn't be around here smelling the stitch of your sin uh, and still working with your life uh, I wouldn't be around uh, letting you complain about what I'm doing uh, shell the clay talk to the potter uh, and say what are you trying to do to me uh, just stay on the wheel look at somebody say stay on the wheel stay on the wheel and if I made it to the wheel that means God has to do something in my life Okay. Dick and Evans, Dick and Bonds. He'll strip you before he robe you. He'll make you hungry before he feeds you. This is somebody say, that's a drama of brokenness. That's a, that's my storyline. That's my storyline. I get built up. I get broken down. Some things he build up. Some things he breaking down. But that's the chronicle of my life. I, I'm here to give God all the glory and all the praise. That's the drama of brokenness. Jude verse twenty. Jude verse twenty. Jude verse 20. But ye beloved, building up, <laughs> y'all ain't getting this, yourself on your most holy faith, Hallelujah. praying in the Holy. I thought somebody was shot on that. Okay. Okay, maybe you're shot on this. Stay in Jude. Verse 24. Maybe, maybe this will help you. Maybe this will help you because I'm finished. The Holy Spirit said I'm finished. Uh, verse 24. Now, now unto him who is able to keep you. When he broke me down, I didn't fall down. I was broken in his arms. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding Anybody got any joy here? I may be going through something right now. God may be breaking some things in my life, but I still have joy. Somebody yell out the top of their lungs and let the devil know I still got joy. His drama and his brokenness, but I give God praise. God knows exactly what he's doing.
the season saints you the seen this i feel like praising him praise him in the morning praise him in the noonday i feel like pra- i feel like praising praising oh i feel Praise him. Praise him. Anybody broken right now? It's a virtue. I feel. Let the devil know. I feel. With my broken bones. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. Look at somebody say, I feel. Then tell him I feel like thanking him. I feel like thinking, thinking. Oh, I feel. I'm learning how to deal with these seasons. Thank him in the morning. Thank him all day long. I feel. Now you got to praise him for your own family. I feel like praising him. Not for you. I got to do it myself. I feel. I'm going to praise him for my healing. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I feel. Then let's sing that again. And sing it like you mean it. I feel. I feel. I feel. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all night long. I feel. Then get up out of your seat and find somebody. And I find him and tell him I feel like. I feel. That's what we came here for. To praise God. I feel. He had to break my legs. Praise him. Praise him all day long. I feel. feel like worshiping him. I feel like worshiping, worshiping him. Right about now. I feel Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. Good God. Let somebody praise him for tomorrow's blessing. I feel this is tomorrow's blessing. I feel Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. Guess what I feel? Anybody feel like praise him? Come down and give me a high five. I feel. That's the only reason I came here. To give God praise. I feel. He's breaking me, but it's a virtue. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day. Good God, I feel like. I feel like I I feel Praise him in the morning Praise him all day long I feel like I feel like shouting I feel like shouting right now I feel like shouting I feel like shout, okay. shout in the morning, shout it all day long. I feel, I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing, dancing. I feel like dancing, like dancing, dancing for him. Dance in the morning, make the devil man. I'm dancing all day long. I feel, I feel like waving my hands. I feel like waving, waving my hand. The devil's mad. I feel like wave, waving my hands. Come on, Texas. Wave them in the morning and a child shall lead them. I feel. Then you used to dance the club. Now dance below. I feel like praising. 
make up your dance right now. Dancing in the morning. Dance all day long. I feel. With your broken legs, give God a praise. I feel like praise. Like praise him. Praise in him. With your broken legs, praise him. Praising is a virtue. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him all day long. One more last, last time. I feel like praise. I feel. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. Guess what I feel? The drama of brokenness. It's the storyline of my life. He's fine. He's fine. It's the storyline of my life. And if you want to know the ending of my story, look at the ending of God's story. A time for Parah. And a time for Barna. He came to overthrow. That he may build up. Now this is the thing. That I tell people. If you wanted to talk about me. You should have talked about me before he broke it down. Because what's coming up is all improvement. Because one time I would slap you across your face. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't. If you were going to talk about me, you should have talked about what was already up before he brought it down. But now that I'm in the community in Christ Jesus, the narrative of my life is all revival. Next week, we'll look at something else. Uh, verse 4. But today, it was a time to break down. And a time to build. Now, here, it's amazing how awesome the potter's hand is. Because he can break down and build up at the same time. Jesus says, break down this temple. Yeah. And in three days. Three days. Amen. He can break down and build up at the same time. Just recognize and embrace what God is trying to break down. Because denial will make you abandon his brokenness. Notice the clay marred in his hands. See, if, if, it, if he would have said, Thomas, go down to the potter's house. I don't know if I would have saw that yet. I see it now because I was broken. Thank you. Jeremiah, get up, go down. Tell Israel what you see. Notice the amount of time God spends in your life sets the value of your life. 